Jack Hicks to uh, Brent Leidick. Uh, and it's actually a, 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 a reverse pass um, as uh, Leidick uh, caught the pass from his fellow whiteout Hicks. And it, th- there were two games last night in which that was a big feature. Uh, the the reverse pass from the whiteout. There was another one on TV that the oh, was yeah? used to. <laughs> Coaches must have all gone to the same <laughs> clinic this week. Marion Center leads at the half 14 to nothing. Northern Cambry opens the second half. A quick four-play touchdown drive. Ben Vassell runs it in from 39 yards on a reverse. Make it 14 to 6. And you're thinking, all right, it was 14 nothing, but that's a Northern Cambria team that's been through some yeah. battles and they know what they're doing. Uh, and uh, all of a sudden they've made it a one touchdown game. But the Stingers, they had the territorial advantage the whole game and the rest of the second half as well. Uh, after a Brant Lydic interception uh, gave it to the Colts or gave it to the Stingers at the Colts 41 at the start of the fourth quarter, they were stopped on fourth down on that drive, but then Reinhardt intercepted a pass and uh, put Marion Center at the uh, 39 yard line of Northern Cambria, five play drive, and they score again. Uh, then uh, that was Brent, or rather uh, Garrett Wells, who had a huge night last night. Uh, Northern Cambria's Mark Marino hit a 39-yard touchdown pass to Tyler Beer uh, for a Colts score, and then Marino scored it from three. Actually, the, the, that came after the pass. But the Stingers picked off four passes in the second half. Garrett Wells had two of them, uh, and he added a 30-yard touchdown run to set the final 28-12. to 12. Now Look at Garrett Wells, and I don't have the complete number here, but at that point, he had a um, hundred and some yards. I can't find it on my sheet here. It's somewhere in here, Ward. It tells me <laughs> what he had. Uh, but uh, he had just had a fantastic night. A great night. Great night. Uh, uh, the whole team must have had a great night. Yeah, and, and as, as you're running it down and you're thinking, okay, wow, um, you know, Northern Cambry has a chance here to get back into this football game. And then Wells ripped one off a 50-yard run. Uh, on the uh, last scoring drive, he had a 52-yard run and a 30-yard touchdown run. Uh, so there's an 82 on just that drive. Uh, just a terrific night all around for the Marion Center Stingers as they come up with the victory over Northern Cambria. Very, very impressive fashion. And they now have their second win of the season. They're 2-3. and three. Northern Cambria falls to 4-1. and one. And uh, those two teams will move on and enter into the wars of the Heritage Conference again next week. Let's get to our coaches from last night, our interview with the head coach of the Stingers, Adam Rising, brought to you by Weaver Pools and Spas. Like it here from Weaver's Pools and Spas. We love football season. We're big fans of the Stingers. Good luck to Coach Rising and the team this season. Spa season is right around the corner. Come see us for the best spas on the market. If you want a new pool, don't delay. We're currently booking next year's projects. Weaver's Pools and Spas, 1905 Philadelphia Street, Indiana. We've been close a lot this year. And finally, all that hard work pays off in a big, big way with the win tonight over Northern Cambria. You walked into that locker room after the football game. What were the guys like? It sure was. I'm, I'm still half speechless. Um, emotions are high. Um, you know, in that locker room afterwards was just a, a bunch of young men that have been challenged, you know, with adversity throughout the season here, you know, the first couple of weeks and, and having success, you know, with one win. And, we just have stayed the course. We we stayed the course of of, of, of lecturing, preaching. Um, just keep getting better. Keep getting better. Keep learning how to compete. And you know, we just you know, he, we we always say he, you can't play the shoulda, coulda, woulda. Um, but dang, we've gotten better every week. And it finally showed tonight. These these guys come out um, tip top cylinders. You know, we knew Northern was going to be big and 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 athletic and strong. And our guys just came out and played with a lot of confidence from the get-go. And I can't be any more prouder than them. Um, I'm thrilled. Um, you know, in this locker room at the end of the game, again, it was an emotional time. Brought the boys together. And I said, guys, you know, our community, Marion Center, um, had a really difficult week, you know, with a horrific tra- tragedy with, with a, a, a bus driver, a mom of three. Um, that, that I'm connected to personally very, very well, and a lot of the boys are related to, and, and she just drove us Saturday to our JV football game. 
So there was tears, there was emotions high, there was just, you know, just just came together. The, the community has really come together at Marion Center, um, in, especially this week, like I said, with the with the unfortunate tragedy that, that's unexplainable. And these guys, they came together. This team came together. These boys grew tonight, and, and I'm so proud of them, and I've been proud of them since since I've taken over, you know, got hired as a head coach. And it just really – um, indicated tonight the confidence and the type of football team that, that we can be here at Marion Center on just learning how to win. And um, like I said, I'm, 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 I'm speechless. It's all credit to our, our, our line, our coaches, um, great senior class, and, and we're going to enjoy this one and throughout the weekend. It's kind of hard to know which is more impressive, your offense last uh, tonight, the two long 13-play drives in that first half, the ability to bounce back against uh, some penalty situations and, and some long situations. And it was just tremendous the way they controlled the line of scrimmage. But then the defense shut down a very potent offense tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we knew they were coming in 330, 340 yards rushing and, and got well-balanced athletes. And, um, you know, defensively, we've been really getting at it. Um, coaches have been doing a great job with, with bringing pressure and, and bringing guys from all angles. And, and I knew we were going to do well defensively. Uh, the challenge has been offensively. And, and I've been saying, hey, we've got to get better. We've got to get better. And I really challenged the kids earlier this week. as coach was like, hey, aren't we going to get any defensive time? I said, we're going to continue to get better offensively. We've got to find that. We've got to create that identity. Our guys got to, got to, you know, find a will, find a way. And I challenged, you know, we did a, you know, offensive line this week and just worked together as a unit and kept practicing and repping and, and, and bringing – pressure all week. I mean, we were, we were hitting hard all week until yesterday. And I said, we got to get, you know, we challenged them and they really stepped up. Um, I can't be any more prouder than Aaron Brewer, Jonah Valia, Travis Parcell, Levi Eisenberg, Clayton Coble, Devin Lincolnfelder on that front line. They truly had a huge impact on winning this football game for us tonight. We're just main, I kept lecturing this week with maintaining and sustaining. If we could start learning how to maintain and sustain blocks, I knew we could be a, 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 a nice football team. And, you know, that's been our struggle, you know, offensively. So um, hats off to them. Um, you know, hats off to, to, to Zach Hicks and Brant Leidick, uh, Vinny Fry, Brandon, uh, Derek Pennington, um, you know, Gavin Pelko, uh, Austin Reinhardt raid, ran really, really hard. Garrett Wells ran super hard. Uh, Zach Hicks made some phenomenal plays. Um, just a whole team effort. I could go on and, and name, you know, all 36 of them. But um, I, I'm just, again, I'm super proud on the way we responded of offensively to sustain drives and, and to move the football against a very nice football team. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to pick off four passes in the second half of a game either, does it? Absolutely. Those guys had some huge picks and, and one definitely a turnover ratio tonight. And that's another thing that we, we've struggled with at the beginning of the season is, is coughing the football up and, and throwing some picks. And um, we were real sound besides, I think, one – I think we had one turnover. Um, but, uh, yeah, defensively, hats off to, to our guys. They're, they're, they're having fun out there, and they're, they're playing with a lot of confidence, and it's great to see. We know it's a rough and tumble Heritage Conference. You're back out at it uh, coming up in practice next week, and, and then next Friday night you're right back on the football field with another chance. Yeah, yeah. We just, like I said, we're going to enjoy this one, uh, travel down to Blairsville, and, um, you know, you know to reflect, it was alumni night at Marion Center. We had a lot of guys back that played football here, um, had them in the locker room. It was just special. It was a special night all around, and, um you know, it's it just hats off to, to our senior class and, and um, you know, juniors and sophomores and freshmen. Um, just a great night at Marion Center. And, you know, we got to regroup Monday and, and, you know, go up to travel to play some JV football Monday night. Um, we'll look at Blairsville and, and make the trip down there. But uh, just got to stay healthy, keep getting better, keep climbing a ladder like we've done every week. And, and um, I like our chances. Thanks, Coach. Thanks a lot, Todd. Appreciate it. Have a great weekend.
There is Adam Rising, uh, his Marion Center Stingers victorious last night over previously undefeated Northern Cambria. Sam Schutte was on the other sideline. Sam Schutte in the wake of a loss to Marion Center is a football team that came out very determined and, uh, and they were a tough match right from the start, weren't they? Yeah, they were a scary team. I said it going in. I mean, they're a big play team and they do a lot of things unconventional and, and it really scared me all week and it's one of these one things where the biggest fear came through and they put one on us. I mean, I, I have credit to their, their coaching staff, their players. Um, we got outplayed today. The two long drives in the first half to start that football game for Marion Center, what was going on for your team defensively? Or I guess a better way to put it is what were they doing offensively that made them so difficult? I think they were putting more people at the point of attack than we had. Um, and our linebackers weren't flowing and making tackles. We just were missing tackles continually. And um, you can't do that in football games. Yeah, one of the things we mentioned was the tackling was really not up to standard for you guys tonight. Not at all. I mean, not making excuses. We were out our starting linebacker, Tyler Dumb. So I mean, that hurt us a little bit, but that's not, that's not why. They were, just, they were just running hard. I give a lot of credit to their backs. Their line was, was doing a good job on our front. And, um, yeah, they, they won the battle. You talked before the game about how difficult that defense is to prepare for, and, and it really showed tonight that uh, you were right. You never knew who's coming from where against that defense. Yeah, and um, I don't think that they did anything that we didn't prepare for. Um, I think our guys were very confused. I don't know why. I, 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 I'm still questioning why they were confused because the things that they did, um, I thought that we were prepared for. I mean, obviously, we weren't prepared for their, their blitzing. And they, they blitz very hard, very fast. And I think we needed to change the cadence a little bit quicker than we did. Um, but again, I got to give credit to their, their guys and their coaching staff. They just, um, again, put more people at the point of attack than we were able to block. Halfback option pass on fourth down in the first half really, really hurt. It did. And it was one of those things where, um, again, I'm not making excuses, but we had to move Mark Marino up to linebacker. He's the one usually making the coverage calls. And we got in, a, we got in our incorrect coverage. And um, our corner thought he had flat coverage when he was supposed to have deep coverage. He stayed in the flat, and the guy was wide open. So it's, it's just one of those things we as coaches need to be cognizant of and make sure it doesn't happen. But at the end of the day, the guys need to know what's going on, and they need to know the system of our defense, which hasn't changed for this game. It was, it's always been there, but it's just when you get new, new parts in there, you know, they're not making the calls like, like you know, you, you're used to. And it's a good illustration by you. When one guy goes out, he's replaced by a guy that frequently is moving for, to another position, and now you've got two new guys in there basically defensively. Right, and again, I'm not making excuses. I, I give all the credit in the world to Homer Center and their game plan and their boys. Um, again, they, they played their hearts out, um, and um, they just beat us tonight. You got laid in that second half. You got the football first uh, and put together that very quick drive, the reverse, uh, and, and Ben was able to get that football in. It looked like you were going to be able to maybe put a rush on him. But again, that defense, four second-half uh, interceptions by, your, by, by Marion Center, and that's just an absolute killer. It, it is, and, and again, it's, it's, it's lack of a focus, I think, on our guys. Um, again, these were plays we've been running all year in camp, and um, we knew we were going to have to pass the ball. And, and I really don't blame Mark for the, his throws. I thought, in the most part, his throws were there. The one bounced right off our receiver's hands. I mean, it hit him perfectly in stride right where you want him to do. Bounce off his hands, interception. Uh, the other one, um, we, ran, we, called a, we called an in route, and our receiver ran an out route. Mark throws the in route. I mean, it's just one of those things where our guys just weren't very focused. I don't, and again, it's one of those things where when, when you have adversity, adversity in your face, how are you going to react? And I don't think our guys reacted the way they needed to react tonight. And I, I hope this is a wake-up call. I don't think this is the type of football that we play. I don't think this is a reflection of how our players are and how their skill level is. But it's just one of those games where it got away from us and um, we didn't really know how to get our feet under our legs again. And have to get that focus back. It's tough next week. No, yeah, it's tough from here on out. I mean, we got Homer, who's who's always prepared, um, ready for us, and I'm sure we've been exposed a little bit with what what happened tonight. And um, again, I think it's a soul searching for our guys. We got to again understand that there's going to be some negative negative publicity out there for our team, a lot of doubters. And um, I told our guys we just got to hold strong, believe in ourselves, believe in our teams. We're, we're the same team we were two weeks ago, and um, we just had a bad one, so we got to turn it around. Coach, thanks. Thank you. 8.22 in the morning, and that is Sam Schutte, the head coach of the Northern Cambria Colts, so they suffer their first loss of the season to the Marion Center Stingers. Northern Cambria now 4-1, and one. and uh, I believe they have Homer next week, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, That's... at home. Yeah, Homer <laughs> 
coming off an upset and having to go into the den of the Colts. So go. they're gonna they're gonna have their hands full next week as well. I think that's a corral, actually. Oh, it's a corral. It is. If they do it upright. Big parade, all the fire trucks are out. The Luther Ford Coaches <laughs> Corner Program, it is 23 minutes after 8 o'clock. We have to say hello to this guy because it's the 50th anniversary oh, season yes. of the By Luther Ford means. Coaches Corner. Go grab a microphone there. He used to be a regular feature here on the Luther Ford Coaches Corner, and then we kicked him out. Uh, he's <laughs> yeah. Okay, feature might be a little bit strong. <laughs> Old Man River is, keeps rolling right yeah, in here. That, <laughs> that microphone isn't working. We were told it was working. It's not. It's not. <laughs> so it's nothing's changed. Nothing changed. <laughs> Bill Otto Hi is there. with us. Good Hi morning. There. Good nice morning. Nice to be here in Coach's Corner. Fifty years. Yeah. How about Holy that? Cow. Jack Benedict started Benedict the program. Started this. Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Incredible. But it's great. Good program. You, um, of course, did Indiana High for us for a lot of years. You were the guy who came up with the word each week the, that described each Indiana High game. I'm not going to ask you to do that on the spot today. Thank you. Go ahead, but do it. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you get a chance to actually listen online to the games. I do. I do. Uh, I listen. I bounce around to the Homer game or the, if I try to find wherever you are, I mm. never know Neither uh, do I. where your game is. And I listen to the Indiana games and it's just, uh, just nice to stay in touch. Yeah, absolutely. And, bit. and, and here it is. Good to see you again. Getting ready to go do some IUP football, huh? That's at four o'clock today. Yeah. There's a lot between now and then, but yes, uh, that'll be a hall of fame weekend. Have you been uh, practicing the names? <laughs> I, as a matter of fact, I have. <laughs> There's only two, but I've got uh, two that are a little difficult, but yeah. I got them down to a science, so we're ready to go. There you go. Bill. It's the Good players I worry about. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's well, it's nice true. to be here. Good to see Bill Otto once again in the studio. Ward, you can have your chair back. It is the Luther Ford Coaches Corner, AM 1450 WDAD 100.3 FM, and at the Sports Channel, WDAD Ooh, your good health looks so good on you. Ladies, the Indiana Regional Medical Center invites you to an unforgettable Spirit of Women evening. Girls Night Out, Good Health Looks Good on Everyone, with guest speaker Natalie Glaser, the author of Don't Call Me Brave, I Was Not Alone. It's Thursday, October 11th at the Rustic Lodge. Natalie Glaser always prioritized her career over everything until she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Hear her amazing story when life gives you lemons, make lemon drops. Admission is free to Spirit of Women members, $20 for all others, and that $20 will make you a member of Spirit of Women for life. Please bring a craft supply or a grocery store gift card that night to be donated to Hopeful Hearts. Engage, eat, and enjoy. It's an evening of inspiration, fun, and laughter. Girls' night out. Good health looks good on everyone. The doors open at 5 p.m. on October 11th at the Rustic Lodge. Call the IRMC Institute for Healthy Living at 357-8088 to register. That's 357-8088. Calm, cool, decidedly continental. With luxury comes outstanding comfort, which is what makes driving a Lincoln a uniquely enjoyable experience. Luxurious, sophisticated, and unmatched performance are words that come to mind when describing the Lincoln brand. Lincoln has been one of the most trusted names in the industry for years, and Luther Lincoln has been a leader for over 60 years. When people think Lincoln, they think Luther Lincoln in Homer City because Luther Lincoln can bring you a deal like this. For a limited time, save $7,000. $700, including $2,000 competitive conquest cash off of MSRP on a new 2018 Lincoln Continental Reserve all-wheel drive, sell priced at just $58,000. And just announced, get 0% financing for 60 months, regardless of down payment. Driving a Lincoln is closer than you think when you visit Luther Lincoln, Route 119 in Homer City. And remember, you can shop 24-7 at LutherFord.com. It's the Luther Ford Coaches Corner celebrating 50 years, and it is. AM 1450, WDAD 100.3 FM, the sports channel, WDADradio.com. Also linked at Trib Live High School Sports Network. The Indiana High Little Indians got their coach back last night and unfortunately ran into a tough Bell Vernon team. Let's learn about the game. Here's Jack Benedict this morning. Bell Vernon came to town, highly touted. Indiana needing a victory, and at the half it was 14-14. Looked like a really good ball game. Bell Vernon had a 77-yard drive to go up seven to nothing with their extra point at the 4:04 mark. 
And then Luke Thomas back in action through a 56-yard touchdown to Ryan Dixon. And uh, 80 yards uh, was that drive, extra point, 7-7. Bill Vernon came back near the end of the period, and they, uh, into the second period, got a 76-yard drive, a five-yard pass play from Hartman to Labuda, and they went up 14-7 with the extra point. Indiana was helped out by two pass interference calls against Bell Vernon and came back to score a touchdown as uh, Thomas, Luke Thomas, pounded it in from one yard out with 107 to go. Sioka added the extra point, and there was 14-14. In fact, Bell Vernon tried a 50-yard field goal at the half, and that was wide. So, looked pretty good. Well, things came tumbling down, and the monsoon rain hit in the third quarter, and wow, did it ever in more ways than one. And uh, Bell Vernon, after Indiana had punted on their first series, came away with a touchdown, a 38-yard drive, and they went up 21-14. to On the very first play, Indiana fumbles, the first of three fumbles in that quarter, and things just got away from them one time after another. And before you knew it, it was up to 41-14, and the eventual score, final score, 49-14. to Bell Vernon wins it. Indiana will be playing next week on the road to Trinity. Two weeks, they're home to McKeesport. The Leopards win it. Jack Benedict reporting for the Luther Ford Coach's Corner Show. All right, Jack, thanks so much. And we get to our interviews with Brandon Overdorf, or interview with Coach Brandon Overdorf and Bruce Weber. And they're brought to you today by Grand Beginnings Children's Center and Forged Human Performance Center. Grand Beginnings Children's Center would like to announce they are enrolling children at both of their locations, South Bend Franklin Road and Grandview Avenue in Indiana. Grand Beginnings Children's Center accepts children from birth through fifth grade. Grand Beginnings Children's Center is a Keystone Star 4 Center, the highest ranking among Keystone Star facilities. And they have a PA Pre-K Counts classroom. They are open Monday through Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Visit grandbeginnings.net or schedule an appointment to find out more. In sports, athletes are looking for that competitive advantage. So where do you find it? At Forged Human Performance Center. Forged Human Performance Center is the area's premier source for sports performance training. Train with an experienced and certified strength and conditioning coach to help improve athletic skills like speed, agility, quickness, and strength while reducing the likelihood of injury. Sports performance training at Forged Human Performance Center. Conveniently located on Route 119 in Homer City or go online at forgedhpc.com to get coach uh, Brandon Overdorf here with us right now and Brandon I guess first of all you've seen a lot of football in your time and this was this was a pretty crazy game to say the least wasn't it I'm not sure I've ever been a part of anything like that uh <laughs> yeah 14-14 we played a great first half we executed the game plan we fought hard uh you know well, I thought we had momentum coming out. We're getting the football coming into the second half. Uh, we thought we needed to take a shot because we knew the rain was coming. So we turned the ball over on downs after two incompletions. Then the rains came, and uh, uh, they punched one in, and, and then the ball became like a foreign object to us. It was like we were playing with a beach ball. I don't know how many. We couldn't. We didn't. We must have fumbled. Well, you know, Luke got cramps, came out one play, fumbled the ball, gave him the ball inside the 20-yard line. Uh, next series, uh, Luke gets cramps, uh, fumble the ball the very next play, give him the ball inside the 20-yard line. And then it was just a uh, comedy of fumbles from there on out. And uh, I have no explanation for uh, why we couldn't handle the ball. I mean, they handled it fine. I know it's raining, but I don't even want to know how many fumbles we had in the second half. And the interception, uh, there was an obvious pass interference that wasn't called. But uh, we didn't take care of the football in the second half. It's tell two halves. Uh, we look. I mean, it, you can't turn the ball over and expect to win games against a team that's as talented as Bell Vernon, uh, and we did. So uh, we played a great first half. The second half is a mystery to me, uh, but we'll clean it up. We got to stay positive. We have a big game next week down at Trinity. So you look at the game. It's 14-14 at the half. You had to feel really good going in there. What did you just say to your team at the half? Uh, you know, at some point they have to take the step to learn how to win. And that was the message. It's your time. We ha- we're in a great position. We're getting the ball. It's 14-14. We just had a 20-play drive to tie the football game up uh, going into half, uh, and we're getting the ball coming out of half. So we're in a great position. You've got to seize the moment. And, 
you know, understand the situation. We're, you know, we're so close, but yet we're so far away. Uh, you know, we're 14-14, and I'm not sure our kids understand how, you know, how impressive that is against a really good football team and that you're in the game and you have a chance to win it and you got momentum on your side. And, I mean, we were juiced coming out of the locker room. Uh, I, I, can't, I have no explanation. I can't, you know, what happened in the second half and the rain hit. And, like I said, it just uh, it was downhill from there when it rains, it pours, I guess. But, uh, and those three turnovers, I mean, very, very quickly – and it wasn't just the turnovers. It was the fact that they converted all three turnovers into touchdowns, and yeah. that was it. You can't turn the ball over, and you definitely can't turn the ball over inside the 20-yard line. And I mean, we gave them the ball, and we gave them the momentum, and we gave them the game. And unfortunate, I, I'm uh, upset with the way we performed in the second half. Obviously, the weather uh, got in our heads or something. I have no ex- – like I said, I've never been a part of anything like that before. I've been blown out before. I've been in good football games before. I've never been in a, a great half and then get blown out in the second half like that. But, ever, but it's my job to fix it. So we'll fix ever it. been in a game where the weather changed like it did? Oh, it, yeah. This, this was horrible. Well, I, I've seen that. I mean, that's Western PA weather. I've seen it come down sideways a thousand times in football games. You know, I mean, that's an exaggeration, but I've seen it a number of times. That's not an excuse. They handled the football. We didn't. Uh, it's just it's a mental thing. Uh, when you haven't won a lot of football games, I think you just you, your focus gets distracted on other things instead of putting the the gas pedal to the floor, and that's something that we have to learn uh, as a program that uh, you you got to stay focused no matter what's going on. And uh, yeah, the rain was a cool little event; it was fun to watch, but you just can't throw a football game away because the rain comes. And so uh, we got to fix it, and we got to get better, and we got to stay focused. And there's a lot of football left. And like I said, we're very, very close, but yet we're very far away, too. So whatever it takes to get over that hump, we're going to find it, and we'll keep uh, working. It's going to be a tough week of practice because uh, we, uh, we dropped like flies early. I mean, we've got to take care of our bodies. Uh, uh, it's mysterious. Let's just put it that way. Yep. What do you say to your team very quickly to get them ready for the next one? Well, we just got to forget about it. It's just like playing every play. It doesn't matter what the score is. You've got to get them playing the next play. You've got to forget about the last game and go play – the next one and compete as hard as you can and fix the mistakes and get better, and we'll do that. Okay. Thank you, Brandon. We'll see you next week for Trinity. All right. Thank you. All righty. We appreciate uh, Brandon Overdorf here on the postgame show with us. Indeed, that's Coach Brandon Overdorf after Indiana High's loss last night to Bell Vernon. It is the Luther Ford Coaches Corner Program. It is AM 1450 WDAD 100.3 FM, the U, the sports channel, I should say, at WDADradio.com. We're back with more from the Heritage Conference next. With luxury comes outstanding comfort, which is what makes driving a Lincoln a uniquely enjoyable experience. Luxurious, sophisticated, and unmatched performance are words that come to mind when describing the Lincoln brand. Lincoln has been one of the most trusted names in the industry for years, and Luther Lincoln has been a leader for over 60 years. When people think Lincoln, they think Luther Lincoln and Homer City because only Luther Lincoln can bring you a deal like this on a Lincoln MKZ. For a limited time, save $5,500, including $750 competitive conquest cash off of MSRP on a new 2018 Lincoln MKZ Reserve all-wheel drive sell price to just $40,750 and just announced get 0% financing for 60 months regardless of down payment. For over 60 years, Luther Ford Lincoln has been Indiana County's car, truck, and SUV leader. Driving a Lincoln is closer than you think when you visit Luther Lincoln Route 119 Homer City. And remember, you can shop 24-7 at LutherFord.com. If your weekend has started with a strain or a sprain, a sports injury, concussion, even a fracture, an ankle injury in Friday's game, an elbow injury from that wobbly ladder, if you've been hurt, visit the IRMC Physician Group Saturday Morning Injury Clinic from 8 a.m. to noon at the Human Motion Institute, Suite 100 on the Indiana Regional Medical Center campus. Walk-ins welcome or call 724-427-2260 that morning to let them know you're coming. On-site x-rays available. The Saturday Morning Injury Clinic is open every Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon, Suite 100 at the Human Motion Institute. It's the Luther Ford Lincoln Coaches Corner Program, AM 1450 WDAD 100.3 FM, the Sports Channel. You are. U92 Radio actually is where that is located, but we directly link it at WDADradio.com and the Trib Live High School Sports Network. So clever. Somebody is. I'm not. I just do what they tell me. 
including showing up here on Saturday mornings to talk with you. Hey, Mr. Otto. <laughs> Purchase line Blairsville last night, Ward. Sort of an intriguing matchup. Uh, you don't expect that at this point of the season uh, that the, the records are going to be what they are between these two schools with this fine football tradition. But there they were last night at Purchase Line. And Chuck Clark had the game on our affiliate, Cat Country 106.3 FM. So, let's find out what happened as it was Blairsville visiting Purchase Line. Chuck Clark along with Coach Abditore, a homecoming victory at the last second here for the Purchase Line Red Dragons as they defeat Blairsville 22-20. to Bobcat scored first offensive play for them, 75-yard touchdown pass. Devin Burkhart to Adam Ratkes. They missed the two-point conversion. They led by the score of 6 to nothing. Now, Purchase Line got on the board uh, in that uh, second quarter. A 31-yard touchdown pass from Jacob Barnett to Josh Seister. Tied the score at 6-all. That's where we were at halftime. They missed the two-point conversion. In the third quarter with 7.57 to play, the Bobcats, Devin Burkhart, a 15-yard touchdown pass to Garrett Hennigan. The two-point conversion was missed, and it was 12-6. to With 50.3 seconds left, we had a power failure here. When the lights came back on, it was the Bobcats with the lead, 12 to 6, but then Purchase Line came back. Josh Seister, a one yard touchdown run to cap a 40 yard drive. That tied the score, and then Seister added the two point conversion to put Purchase Line in front, 14 to 12. With a minute four to play in regulation, Devin Burkhardt, a two yard touchdown run to cap off a 45 yard drive. It was a Burkhardt to Garrett Hennigan two yard point conversion. The two point conversion put the Bobcats up 20 to 14, but there was still a minute four left in the game. Purchase line marched it down the field. It was a touchdown pass of six yards to Seister as time ran out. That tied the game at 20. And then Seister, a two-point conversion, put the Purchase line Dragons in front for good, and they win the game. Coach, a tough way for the Bobcats to lose this one tonight. Chuck, you know, you got to be happy for Purchase line. Obviously picked 6-0 to lose this game hadn't won a game, hadn't really done that much, and really, when it came down to the end, who wanted to win more? And obviously, they did. I mean, it's just, it's hard to explain it. Uh, there's a lot for this team to overcome this week. When you, ha you lose a starter to an injury that you can't even imagine how it could happen, you have somebody quit on you, and then you have to discipline another player uh, these are just things that just take away from the whole team unit. We didn't, really didn't have a good practice week, but hats off to Purchase Line. They took it to us right up the middle, smack you right in the mouth, played hard, hard-nosed, downhill football, and there's nothing more to it. And then you had a, a Seister, and I believe they're brothers, uh, both shifty, nice movements, good cuts, run hard. That was a six-yard pass, but he had to run about 35 yards to get to the score, and he ran unabated the entire way. Hats off to him. Uh, it's a shame, just a shame. So both teams now leave this game with one and four records as Purchase Line defeats Blairsville by the score of 22 to 20. All right, Chuck, thanks so much. We get to our interviews with the coaches from last night's game. Rick Artley, of course, for Blairsville. And Matt Felisic, the head coach of the Victorious Purchase Line Red Dragons last night. And our interview with Coach Felisic brought to you by Nelson and Associates Insurance. Game plans, how important they are in the world of sports. Coming up with the right strategy to ensure success. Who's on your team to help you reach your goals in life and protect your assets? Jack Nelson of Nelson Insurance can develop the right insurance game plan for you. Nelson Insurance is an independent agent representing Erie Insurance and other fine companies. Call Nelson Insurance for a review of your financial game plan. Nelson Insurance, Franklin Street Climber, 724-254-9276. Coach Felicic, congratulations. Homecoming, rain, power outage, and you come up with a last-second victory. Yeah, that was an awesome game to be a part of. Uh, <clears throat> probably the most exciting game I've been a part of since 2006 when we lost to Juniata Valley in overtime for the District 6 to get to the District 6 championship game. But what an awesome game. Uh, our kids never quit and able to drive down there as time expired and score was just an awesome feeling. And I feel you know happy for those kids and proud to be a part of the team. Boy, there were some ups and downs for both these teams tonight. Yeah, uh, the game started off quick. Blairsville 
Uh, we had Brady Slyster out there playing corner, and he's a freshman. This is the first game he ever started in, and they went vertical on him, and Brady got smoked, but he came back and played a really good game at cornerback, so hats off to him for playing well the rest of the game. But, yeah, up and down game, the power outage, uh, got our kids motivated to go, and we went right at Blair's right after that, and we're pretty successful. Bobcats scored on their first offensive play. Then uh, you came back, you lost a fumble, and it put the, the Bobcats in scoring uh, position, but they weren't able to take it in. Yeah, um, after they scored, we got the ball and uh, drove down as well, and then Blair's will move the ball. So it was a back-and-forth game. I mean, nobody could really control. Both uh, offenses started to struggle a little bit, but uh, it turned out to be a great ball game. How about the play of your uh, quarterback, Jacob Barnett, and uh, Mr. Seister had an outstanding game? Yeah, the last, uh, <clears throat> last series of the game there, we were, you know, in a twins look, spreading them out, and we told Barnett, nobody's open, look to Josh for, Josh for the check down, and you know, the play we scored on was an actual called flare pass to him, and he made a great read across the field. And, uh, you know, credit the linemen because they had him stopped. And our linemen yes. came downfield and made some great blocks, and he's able to cut the whole way back across the field and get it in and just need that two-point conversion. You knew you had to stop the Blairzo passing game, but did you throw a bit more than you usually would? Uh, in a second, yeah, actually, yes, because, you know, we don't pass the ball much. But uh, we passed, I think Barnett had 112 yards, which is probably the most he's had in, obviously this whole year. So he did a great job when we needed him. And, you know, after Blairsville punched that one in, he had started putting their heads down a little bit. And, hey, we got a minute to go here. We can get the ball and drop down the field. And that's just what they did. Yeah, there was a minute four left when the Bobcats scored. You were down 20 to 14, but that was an impressive drive. You went uh, a long way in a short amount of time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> You know, hats off to our kids. I'm super proud of them. You know, only three seniors. We started two freshmen. It's a good feeling. Those guys are getting all experience. Um, Josh and Colin and uh, Cameron all ran hard tonight. Cal Day ran hard, played good defense. So I'm just proud of the kids. It seemed like your team, especially your offensive unit, was getting stronger as the game progressed. Yeah, the, the power outage did wonders for us. Um, <laughs> as funny as it sounds, they got motivated when that power went out. And I said that when the power was out, I said, do we want to go in an eye and just run it right at them? And they said, that's what we want to do. So we ran basically the rest of the third and the fourth quarter and ran the same exact play right at them. And, Blair was having trouble stopping it, but our line was they were ready to go. Have you been involved in a game before where your offense scores with no time left in the first half and then they score again with no time left in the game? No. <laughs> no, that's the first time ever. We sc Josh, I think, I think it was Josh, I think, uh, scored his time ran out in the first half and he scored his time ran out in the second half. Never seen anything like that. What does this do for your ball club as you get ready for next week's matchup? It's huge because our kids are lacking so much confidence and uh, it's hard to keep them motivated, to keep them going. We're trying to find an offense that's going to click with these guys, trying to make it easy on our linemen. We switched things up tonight. I thought it worked better. We had a, you know, guys, a lot of guys touching the ball, so I think that was a plus. But uh, it's huge for our kids. They needed this. They were excited, and it uh, feels good. All Coach Felicic, I, I think this is going to be a homecoming uh, win that Purchase Line fans are going to remember for a while. Absolutely. I don't know if there's many left at the end of the game there after the power outage, but definitely. The ones who are there, they got to see a great football game. And Coach Matt Felicic is the Purchase Line Red Dragons defeat the Blairs of Bobcats 22-20 to as we continue with our Luther Ford Lincoln Coach's Corner program. All right, Chuck, thanks so much. That's Coach Felicic. He was on the winning sideline last night. On the other side of the coin, here's Rick Artley, the Bobcats head coach. With Rick Hartley, the head coach of the Blairsville Bobcats. Coach, that was a tough way to lose one tonight. Yeah, I mean, to have actually, you don't see very often the last play of a half happen for a touchdown, but for them to do it twice tonight is just unbelievable. I mean, it's something when you when things aren't going your way and, and you're not, uh, you know, little things that could have happened in that game. Late, I, I really thought that Garrett was in bounds, and even the official made the made the call at the end he said he he thought he rushed putting him out of bounds on that play and you know if you could have taken 25 seconds off the clock before you run a play down on the goal line that makes a difference and then you know and again at the end of the game there that ball was tipped on the kickoff they waited until after the tip was there he rolled another 20 or about 10 or 15 yards and that's those are seconds that you know definitely could have been 2.5 seconds off the clock at the end of the game but you know, for us to, to battle back once we went down 14 12, you know, we had a possession, had to punt it away with about six minutes, seven minutes to go in a game. And then we were able to create a turnover. Zach uh, 
was able to, to pop, you know, pull the ball out of that running back's hands, and he created that turnover, and we got the ball back at the 50. You know, we had a big, big fourth down there that Adam went up, made a great play on the sidelines for a completion, and, you know, we get down there and score with a minute to go, and our whole thing we talked about at, at that point was breaking down at the end, and that's something we didn't do. I mean, they threw a couple flat routes out there, just flares out to their back. You know, we covered it up fairly well downfield, but we just didn't do it when they got them the ball out in the flats. And, you know, that's that's what happens. And we allowed them to have some big plays on, on plays that honestly late in the game you wouldn't think would hurt you much. But if you don't break down, then those ended up being 20 and 30 yard gains instead of, you know, either three or four yard losses or no gain at all. But when that occurs, that's, that's a difficult thing to overcome. And, uh, you know, like I said, to, to give up two scores with no time left in both halves, it's just unreal. Yeah. Did Birch's line throw more than you expected? Nah, they did threw at the end. You know, honestly, they, they did probably what they should have done in the first place and getting that eye and just try to run it down our throats instead of running, you know, we actually played them fairly well. Um, until the rains came and then they got in that eye formation and just jammed it down our throats. So, you know, that that part of it, I, I mean, they threw the ball at the end of the game there, but they had to, you know, so it wasn't even a surprise. It's just we didn't make plays. And honestly, we covered them pre fairly well downfield. You know, most of those completions in the, at the end of that game were all to the back standing. Just, he just ran right out to the right and waited. And then if the quarterback had no one to throw to, he'd throw it to him. And, you know, that's something that uh, – yeah, you know, we see on film. We saw it last when they played two weeks ago against Marion Center, and you know we just didn't cover it. We we came up and just ran right by it. And as we're linebackers, that were we're out there, so it wasn't even. You know, it's one thing if it's your down lineman trying to stop a, a back in the open field. It's a linebacker on their back. You gotta you gotta do a better job of of uh, making that play that we we just didn't do. So, you know that's that's a difficult. That's a difficult game to, to deal with right now, but you know you got to forget about it. You got another game next week um, against a Marion Center team that beat Northern Cambria tonight. What I would have, out of, you know, had no no problem betting on that one if I would have taken Northern Cambria in a heartbeat just to win that game, let alone lose by a couple scores. So it's uh, you know a tough team that we're going to be playing next week for our homecoming and. You know, I, I thought our biggest problem was in the first half. We just didn't get the job done when we got uh, the first stop through a touchdown on the first play. Then came back in two drives in a row. We started inside their 40. One, I think, was inside their 20, and we didn't punch it in. And when you leave a team stay in the game like that where we could have had a two- or a three-score lead, that's, that's a game-changer. And, and we gave them the momentum. And I told these guys that in the, in the first uh, – before we went out. You know, you gotta you got to create – some turnovers, but you got to put the ball in the end zone when you have the chance because the longer you leave a team, stay in the game, the harder it is to, to beat them, and that's exactly what we did tonight. We left them in too long. What effect did the power outage have? I don't think that had much of an effect. I think the rain that, that was with that made a little bit of more difficulty on us. Um, but, you know, like I said, maybe the ball doesn't pop out that Zach got, right. you know, if it's not soaking wet. So, you know, it was a good drive for us. We got the ball around the 50 and went right down the field and scored. And, you know, you can't ask for more there, but it's just it's a tough way to end it. Well, we didn't get two two-point conversions that I thought we had both opportunities to get. And, uh, you know, we, we threw to the wrong guy on the first one, and the second one we didn't get to trap man kicked out so so Devin could run the football. And uh, you know, those those points really come back to haunt you. Larzo loses twenty two twenty at purchase line. Todd and Ward, back to you. All right, Chuck, thanks so much. The uh, purchase line Red Dragons, they got the win last night. Ward's got to feel good. Yeah, both of those teams have got some talent, and it, you can see it in that ball game. And you knew eventually something's going to give there that the Dragons are going to win a game or two. They're, they're, they've got a good ball club. I think they do anyway. And uh, they gave uh, the Blairsville uh, everything they wanted and then came out on top. So it was just a matter of time. This, this conference is – 
is going to be that way throughout the rest of this year. It's going to be topsy-turvy, so you, you can't take anything for granted. There were a couple of games in the Heritage Conference last night that probably opened some eyes. Of course, that Marion Center game against Northern Cambria was one of those. There were a couple of teams that didn't play last week that were on the field last night as well. We'll talk about them coming up next. Uh, one of those teams was Salzburg, and the Trojans got back out onto the football field last night, which is where they wanted to be all along. And, boy, did they have a good game against the Penns Manor Comets. We'll give you the story of the Comets' victory over the Trojans last night. That is next on the Luther Ford Coach's Corner program, celebrating 50 years on AM 1450 WDAD, 100.3 FM, and the Sports Channel at WDIDradio.com. It's time for another kickoff. And Luther Ford is kicking off SUV season with amazing deals on America's top-selling brand. Always unstoppable Ford SUVs. And with the fall season upon us, and I dare to say winter not far behind, now's the time to take delivery on a new Ford SUV. During SUV season, save $5,645 off of MSRP on a 2018 Escape SE four-wheel drive, including $2,145 in Luther Ford discounts and $3,500 Ford rebate. Special SUV season price is only $23,200 plus tax and fees. And get 0% financing for 60 months regardless of down payment. Take delivery by October 1st. Not all buyers will qualify for red carpet lease or Ford credit financing. See dealer for details or call Luther Ford at 1-877-370-6292. See the escape and complete lineup of SUVs and four tough trucks during SUV season at Luther Ford Route 119, Homer City. And remember, shop 24-7 at LutherFord.com. With interventional cardiology, services that previously had to be done in Pittsburgh now are available at the Indiana Regional Medical Center's Center for Cardiac and Vascular Care. From heart catheterizations to balloon angioplasties and stents, the Center for Cardiac and Vascular Care is saving lives. Here's Dr. Raj Palai. This changes the community, and this changes the hospital. This is about the patients and the community we serve. The Center for Cardiac and Vascular Care at the Indiana Regional Medical Center. Always great care. The Luther Ford Coach's Corner Program here on AM 1450 WDAD 100.3 FM. Linked at the Trib Live High School Sports Network and direct link at WDADradio.com to the sports channel. Actually, kind of worried, Ward. The phone hasn't rung with Mr. Burdick on the other end of it yet. <laughs> what do you suppose that's all about? He's drying out after a, a long, soggy night there. <laughs> you have to watch how you say that. <laughs> <laughs> it is a Saturday morning, and last night, uh, the Salzburg Trojans, after a week off, they were able to get back onto the football field where they took on the Penns Manor Comets in Salzburg. And, of course, everybody was dealing with the weather last night. They moved the kickoff up to 6.30 so they could get the game in with uh, less of a threat from the weather. Um, But the Trojans were threatened right away by the Comets uh, defensively, actually, uh, as Dimitri Lieb on the first possession of the football game intercepts the pass and runs it back. A pick six for him, a touchdown for uh, the Penns Manor Comets. It's a 41-yarder, and the Comets go up in the football game by a score and they kept scoring they led 28 to 7 at the half uh, they they put on a score at the end of the first half where uh, Zach O'Neill intercepts a pass and then Zach O'Neill throws the reverse pass uh, for the touchdown to Andrew Packer uh, which comes with no time left on the clock at the end of the first half a killer uh, for the Trojans because there you are you're within two scores and boom it's 28 to 7 just like that and 28 7 seems like a lot bigger deficit uh, than just seven points uh, than, than 21-7. It, it, 21-7 seems like a much closer game to you. Three scores are, are difficult, uh, especially against a team like Penn's Manor. But, uh, again, the Trojans uh, have some very talented offensive performers, and uh, they demonstrated that in the second half. Yeah, they certainly did. Uh, Comet's still going up 42-13 after three. So uh, they put another couple of scores on, as did the Trojans. They put one on. So 42-13 entering the fourth quarter. And um, I don't know. If I'm a fan, I'm certainly thinking that's comfortable enough. If you're a coach. It should be. <laughs> if you're a coach, you're probably not comfortable. And uh, last night, you probably shouldn't have been because uh, the Trojans scored 20 unanswered in the fourth and had a chance at a two-point conversion to put them within a score. Uh, but the Comets were able to stand up defensively and stop that and keep the margin uh, as it was at the final 
as the Penns Manor Comets come up with the victory 42-33. to Dylan Sindrick ran for over 200 yards for Salzburg last night. He had a, pick, uh, a, a punt return of, I think, 96 it wow. was. Uh, so a big, big game for Dylan Sindrick. Matt Samoji continues to just plow out the yardage for Penns Manor. Uh, he's just turned into one of those workhorse backs that you you get at Penn's Manor. You get those guys that are going to work it and work it and work it, and they'll rip off a, a four-yard and then a 12-yard, and in his case last night, a 70-yard run, uh, and uh, and they'll just wear down a defense. And uh, so just that a, was – Just a solid player. That's yeah. all you can say. He's, he's consistent. That's what's going on last night. The Trojans, though – uh, we're really, really pushing the Penns Manor Comets in this win. So let's talk to the two coaches involved. Our interview with Bill Packer, the head coach of the Penns Manor Comets, is brought to you by Nelson and Associates Insurance. Game plans, how important they are in the world of sports. Coming up with the right strategy to ensure success. Who's on your team to help you reach your goals in life and protect your assets? Jack Nelson of Nelson Insurance can develop the right insurance game plan for you. Nelson Insurance is an independent agent representing Erie Insurance and other fine companies. Call Nelson Insurance for a review of your financial game plan. Nelson Insurance, Franklin Street Climber, 724-254-9276. Coach Bill Packer joins us here on the Luther Ford Coach's Corner. Uh, Coach, you can never be comfortable around this league, can you? Salzburg came back at you. They did. They're, you know, they're a good team. Um, they have nice size up front. They, they really moved moved us around a bit up front, uh, which I felt uh, I felt we could play with them up there. Uh, we really worked on the pass game. Uh, we we did a pretty nice job stopping the pass, but uh, they ran the ball on us. And that Cinder was a heck of a runner. Uh, he had a lot of yards on us. I don't know how many yards he had, but. He had a big game last night. So you start the ball game uh, pretty well. I mean, you get the pick from Dimitri and the touchdown and uh, the pick six for him. Uh, you build up a lead. You're up 28-7 to seven at the half, 42-13 to 13 after three quarters. You throw a trick play in there with the uh, after Zach O'Neill intercepts the pass. He throws a reverse pass to Andrew Packer for the TD there at the end of the first half. Uh, and you go into the locker room, you have to be feeling pretty well. Um, talk about defense for your team in the first half as opposed to the way you played in the second. Uh, the first half, I thought, you know, we did a pretty nice job. Even though they did move the ball well, um, they went on some nice little drives, but uh, we stopped them on a lot of fourth down uh, tries. So uh, uh, that that was big. Uh, the second half, they just moved the ball, and, uh, you know, they just did they had some big plays, uh, some big runs, two play drives where uh, Cindric would uh, hit the edge, and we just couldn't tackle him. Uh, it would come down to one guy in the secondary; he'd put a move on him, and uh, he he just uh, is a great athlete. But uh, we just went through the motions in the second half, so uh, I'm not real happy about our second half play uh, defensively, but. Uh, Again, give give Salzburg a lot of credit. They came out, they played hard, and uh, they battled us, and and they made it into a football game. It's interesting you points there. Yeah, it's interesting you put it that way because we saw you the week before against United, and your second half was absolutely impeccable. The kids came out with fire, and they controlled the football, and and just uh, really put one on United in that game. And then they come out in this game at Salzburg, and they come out flat in the second half. Yeah, I'm not happy about that, and uh, I don't know why. Uh, um, you know, we didn't adjust to to what they were doing. We knew what was coming, and we uh, we just got blocked and and couldn't get to the kid and and give them a lot of credit. Uh, they came out. They never gave up. They never quit, and uh, made it into a ball game. Coach Matt Samoji was big for you in that United game in the second half, and again last night you were able to rely on Matt to get you some some tough yards. Talk about your offense in the football game last night. Um, again, we had we had some nice drives. Uh, uh, I think what really turned it around, even in that first in the first half, is uh, we had a third and twenty-seven, and uh, we ran a play with Samoji, and he had a seventy-yard run. Um, uh, to put us at the five-yard line, and uh, we had first and goal at the five, and Tommy Hamilton ran it in from there. So 
So uh, that was a big play. And uh, Matt ran hard again last night as he did last week. And our backs ran hard. I thought we had some nice drives. Um, the thing that uh, really in that first quarter, uh, we only had the ball for three plays. We went three and out the first quarter. And uh, Salzburg really dominated that first quarter, even though we were up 8 nothing. They, they put on some drives. We had the ball for three plays, and uh, we just stopped them on fourth down plays. Or uh, This game could have been a, a different story. Yeah, Salzburg's a pretty tough group of kids, and, and you know that they came out with some fire because they didn't get to play the week before. I don't imagine you were all that thrilled about having to play them on their field after, after everything that they've gone through. Right. We knew they had two weeks to prepare for us. Uh, I thought Coach Lazier and the staff did a great job preparing for us. Uh, they, they had us confused for at times, and, uh, you know, we didn't really adjust well. And uh, give them credit. Uh, they were ready to play football. They came out, and they, they battled us. Well, you've got now the chance to get the kids in and look at the video from last night's game and then get them back out on the practice field. You know, you got another tough one coming up. Well, we do. Uh, West Shemokin, uh we know uh, what kind of team – they have uh, Coach McCullough does a great job there. Um, you know, we 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 did see them once on film. Uh, they have a, a nice physical team there. A lot of guys back from last year. The light cap kid, and uh, also uh, the linebacker. Uh, he just was all over us last year, and he's back again. Um, so they have a big physical team, and uh, we're going to have to. Prepare. Uh, we had a couple injuries last night. Hopefully, uh, we get a couple of them back. But uh, I'm not sure about that. But we know we're going to be in for a battle. Absolutely. All right, Coach. Well, thanks for being with us this morning. Hey, thanks a lot, Todd. Bill Packer, the head coach of the Penns Manor Comets, on the other sideline last night, a game effort for the Salzburg Trojans and their coach, Mike Lazier. And Mike Lazier, the Salzburg Trojans head coach, joins us. Coach, uh, you have to be pretty proud of that effort last night. Guys hadn't played football for a while, and uh, they showed that they were more than eager to get back out there, weren't they? Yeah, the, the kids kids played well. Um, you know, things didn't go our way early, but, uh, you know, the kids kept, kept a positive attitude, and they were able to... Uh, they kept fighting all night, which you know was it was great to see as a coach, and that's that's all you can ask for. You're down twenty eight seven at the half. Did it feel like you had been outplayed that badly to be down three touchdowns? No, it it didn't really. Um, you know, well, there was a couple big plays. You know, in that first half, um, you know, there was a you know, third and we had them in a third and twenty five, and you know, we had a missed assignment, and they ran a trap up the middle, and you know, they hit that, they executed that, and they. Broke that off for a sixty or seventy yard run, which that that hurt us pretty bad there. And then you know they ran a nice jet pass on a you know a third and long that they converted on that. So those were a couple big plays in that first half. But um, you know with Penn's Manor, they just they're, they're so well coached. If you you give them any you know advantage, they 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 definitely take advantage of what um, you know what what your your mistakes are. So. That's a credit to them, and that, that's the way they've been. Well, speaking of big plays and big players coming up big, uh, let's talk a little bit about Dylan Sendrick. He rushes for over 200. Uh, he had, the what was the punt return for over 90? Yeah, he had a, a big punt return, um, you know, 200 on the ground. You know, he, he kept us in the game, and, you know, all night when you get that effort, they, the kids fed off him last night. I mean, you know, late in the game, he's he's carrying the team, but, I, you know, uh, our offensive line uh, was just, you know, that, that's the best I've seen them come together as a, as a unit last night. I, I'd just like to mention those kids, Ryan Elwood, Garrett Carr, Peyton Fisher, Matt Grimpland, and, you know, even Zach Simpson when he came in uh, as a backup center, and, you know, Gino Bartolini at tight end. With, you know, we those, those line, that line did a tremendous job last night coming off the ball, and that, that was very good to see as a coach. Well, I'm wondering about that because uh, sometimes you can see something beginning to come together during practice the week before. Did you have any idea that these guys were really starting to gel up front? And we saw that last night, um, you know, during the game, and we made some adjustments. But, you know, that that's it was great to see. They've been pretty consistent all year. Um, 
you know, we have been able to run the ball, and uh, you know that was just great to see last night out of those guys up front. You mentioned how um, Dylan was able to carry the team. I think you know when you get guys that are starting to run downhill like that, uh, the linemen sort of uh, they take ownership of that running game as well. They know that um, if they just give him a crack, he's going to take it, and uh, that seems to have been what happened. Yeah, definitely. And you know we were down forty-two thirteen. You know, with about nine minutes left, but, you know, our we didn't have to. You know, with the rain, the conditions, we were able to to run the ball, and that, that's a credit to that line. You know, so I'm very proud of what they did. You know, Coach, uh, we we talk about uh, big breaks in games, and big breaks are made by teams. And um, they had a couple of really big ones: uh, the pick six uh, at the beginning of the game, uh, another interception, which leads to the reverse pass for the touchdown right there at the half. Uh, those could be backbreakers for a team, but your guys came out in the second half and they were ready to go. Yeah, that, those were definitely back backbreakers. And then you know we had a uh, another defensive stop. You know, late in that game. Um, you know, I think that was late third quarter. But uh, you know that was big. There, that might have been in the fourth quarter. But you know they were punting. And we, you know we had a, a roughing the kicker, which which gave them the ball back. So there was opportunities for us. And you know we were in that game. You know late in the game. But again, credit Penn's Manor because you know I think they're what have they been in the playoffs? Fifteen straight years. You know, so they you make mistakes, they're gonna they're gonna make you pay. All right. So you turn it around next week um, and a big one on the road. Yeah, we got United. Um, you know and. They've been putting together a pretty good year, um, so it's going to be a tough game. You know they're well coached as well, so we'll get our kids ready and um, you know we'll we'll be ready to battle. Have you had a chance to look at them at all? Yeah, we've seen them. Um, you know they're a tough tough team, disciplined. You know the Silk Kid, we know what he can do, and they got athletes. So um, you know they're they're tough to prepare for, and you know but we'll get our guys ready and we'll go down there and give them a fight. There you go. Hey, Coach, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mike Lazier, the head coach of the Salzburg Trojans. They fell last night to the Penns Manor Comets by a final of 42-33. to Celebrating its 50th season, this is the Luther Ford Lincoln Coaches Corner. And we're here on WDAD Indiana. AM 1450, 100.3 FM. The Sports Channel at WDADradio.com. Scoreboard time. Here we go from last night. Heritage Conference. Marion Center pulls the upset on Northern Cambria 28-12. Ligonier Valley 42-12 over West Shimokan. We'll be talking about this game in this half hour. Purchase line with the 22-20 victory over Blairsville. End of the game win there. Penns Manor beat Salzburg 42-33. United Homer Center. Give that one to the Lions by a score of 14-13. At rain-swept Memorial Stadium last night, Ward, you were there. How soggy did the pizza get? It got very soggy. Actually, uh, when that monsoon, and that's what we called it, hit, it was uh, right now. I mean, you, you saw a few leaves flying, the next thing you saw a wall of water, and people were running like a Godzilla movie. They were <laughs> out of there. <laughs> In the West Pack last night, Shade remains undefeated with a 56-39 win over Portage. Shade is for real. Panthers. And then you beat Portage. Portage generally dominates over there, and uh, Shade usually a doormat. But uh, this year they've got something. It's yeah. kind of like the Ferndale team of, what, a year ago. Uh-huh. Uh, they're pretty. They're, they're having their season, and they put their foot down pretty much last night. Shade, of course, is undefeated. Connemaw Township is undefeated as well, as Connemaw Township came up with a 35-7 win over Black Lick Valley. The natural question is, when do Shade and Connemaw Township play? I'll bet you can tell us. The answer is this coming Friday. Wow. Yeah. Mid-season game. Wow, that's going to be interesting. Yeah, the uh, shade Connemaw Township matchup coming up on Friday. It is at CT. That'll be a game to see. We'll be talking about that one next week. Winber defeats Berlin Brothers Valley 31-14. Ferndale's first win of the season, 7-6 over North Star. Berlin down a little this year, too. Yeah, they are. They are. Myersdale is at Connemaw Valley today. 
District 6 scores. Here we go. Richland is undefeated. 47-6 to 6 over Somerset. Boy, it sure looks like Richland and Ligonier Valley are on a collision course, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, they seem to be the class of the 2A. Tussie Mountain 44, Williamsburg nothing. West Branch 21-20 win over Mount Union last night. I guess uh, everybody seems like they're on a collision course when they're undefeated, but then there's this team behind them uh, called Bellwood Antis, uh, and they're in double-A this year, too. They beat Moshannon Valley 35-12, their only loss of the season, season opening against Tyrone. Bedford beat Central Cambria 35-14. Chestnut Ridge is unbeaten. 23-8 win over Cambria Heights last night. Forest Hills 36, Bishop McCourt 14. Penns Valley a 35-18 win over Huntington. Bishop Guilfoyle defeating Johnstown 42-6. First loss of the season for Southern Huntington. It's a big one. They're a double-A school. They were undefeated heading into last night, but they fell to Class A Juniana Valley uh, as the uh, Hornets get the 35-27 win to move to 3-2 and two on the year. Bishop Carroll, a 31-13 win over Phillipsburg Osceola. The Huskies win one. Yeah, it's, it's they've been struggling of late, too. Tyrone falls to Belfont 31-14. Juniata lost to William Valley, 37-12. to Today, Glendale's at Claysburg. Kimmel Penn Cambria is at Westmont Hilltop in high school football as well. And we get to the WPIAL, AAA, uh, Bell Vernon over Indiana, 49-14. Indiana plays Trinity next. Thomas Jefferson beat Trinity, 48 to nothing. Uh, other area schools in action, Armstrong fell to Mars, 42-15. Derry and North Catholic undefeated heading into the game last night. Both teams... And Derry wins it 27 to nothing. The Trojans are 5 and 0. Oh. Good for them. They are rolling this year. Mm-hmm. Apollo Ridge falls to Avonworth 42 6. Punxsutawney and Kane postpone. They'll play that one on Saturday today. Okay, so there you go. There's your scoreboard. It's 14 minutes after 9 o'clock. We need to get to our next game as the Ligonier Valley Rams traveling to West Shimokan. The uh, Wolves 3 and 1 coming into the game. The Rams at 4 and 0. Oh. They're playing for the first time after having the week off last week. And the Rams have a lot on the line. They've got some records that they are chasing, um, Heritage Conference, school records. And, well, last night they got a couple of them. Scoreless after one quarter, though, uh, between these two teams as they traded back and forth. West Shemokin actually had uh, the better of the play, probably, in the first quarter. The Wolves had a chance when Jaden Haswell caught a big pass and took it all the way to the Rams' 10 on the first possession, but they couldn't punch it in. They could only get down to the 8 on four downs. They turned it over. Then Tyler Lightcap intercepts a pass, puts West Shemokin in the scoring position again, but again the Rams' defense turns them away. Uh, Sam Sheeter then scores for Ligonier Valley early in the second quarter, capping a drive, a four-yard uh, quarterback keeper came in and uh, took the snap that time. And then with 3.15 left, Kiri Miller, Scores the first of his two touchdowns. He had 202 yards rushing last night. Uh, Kerry weaves through the Wolves D from about six yards out, and he scores a really nice run. Ligonier Valley forces a punt. Uh, it's a low snap. Trouble with it. The Rams take over, and they drive it. I mean, they, they get the punt all the way back uh, to the uh, eight-yard line, but uh, penalty 15-yarder on Ligonier Valley puts it at West Shemokin's 23. Uh, then John Caldwell hits Aaron Tatino for 21 yards. Miller runs it in from two, and it's 21 to nothing at that point. Now, this is all happening with 3.15 left. Remember, I, I used yep. that time marker. 3.15 left in the second quarter. 7 nothing to that point. Now they've uh, scored twice. It's 21 to nothing. Zach Beidel, Beidel picks off the first of his two interceptions on the night. On the very next West Shemokin play, Miller, and then rips off a 39-yard run. You're thinking, okay, they're going to sit on the ball. That was a fourth down play from his own 42. He runs it for 39. John Caldwell runs up, gets his team organized, spikes the ball. There's one second left in the first half. (laughs) He hits Tatino on a a 19-yard fade for the score. It's 28 to nothing at the half. You talk about turning a game around. Yep, that, that, that'll put the knife in it. Those final couple of minutes, in fact, the final second of the first half. Then in the third quarter, there's a lightning delay. Uh, so the two teams have to sit on their fannies for a little while until they can get the uh, the all clear to go. They do in the third. Lightcap's uh, second pick sets up the Wolves for their first score. He hits Jaden Haswell from 21 out. It's 28-6 to six at that point, but LV answers with the Aiden Kelly touchdown run from three. Sheeter gets his second touchdown of the night from one yard out. Uh, and then the final score of the night, 
A light cap with another pass, this time to Blake Fairman from 40 yards. That sets the final. Ligonier Valley 42, West Shemokin 12. The Rams came right back after having the week off last week, and Ward, they hit their stride right away. Yeah, I'm sure they had a pretty intense week of practice. Well, they want to get back on the field, certainly. And uh, they certainly, uh, once they got the cobwebs out there at first quarter, became Ligonier again. And yeah. uh, they would have the offensive weaponry to do that, even as good as the defense is for West Shemoke. And they're on the field way too much against a team like that. They did lose Sullivan Schultz to an injury last night, so we're hoping the best for that young man. Let's talk to the two coaches involved in the game last night. Roger Beidel of the Ligonier Valley Rams. They're undefeated at 5-0. and Roger Beidel, the win tonight over West Shemokin on their field, on this turf field, uh, and uh, really rough and tumble football game once again. Uh, pretty close until you got there toward, toward halftime or able to stretch it out a little bit. Talk about how the game went and, and how you feel your team played after a week off. Well, I mean, we won. That's the most important thing. Um, and, and, and quite honestly, you know, with, with what happened last week, um, the lesson we learned is that we're going to celebrate every opportunity we have to be a football team and a football family and, and enjoy the little things and enjoy the opportunity to play. And, uh, you know, West Shemokin came out and they made some, they made some plays. They hit a long pass. And, and then, you know, our kids responded well. Um, Made an interception, returned it deep in our own territory. Our, our defense stood tall again. Um, couldn't really get the offense going much in the first quarter. Uh, we did come out. We did, we did get a scoring drive. Um, and then really in the second quarter, we made some really big plays. And, and I think, you know, credit to our kids who just have been in those situations so many times where um, they, they see, oh, we have a couple minutes on the clock. Well, we can score. And we've, we've practiced this so many times. We've done these things. Just a, a fantastic, uh, you know, a lot of credit to our kids. It was just a fantastic drive. Um, showed a lot of leadership and a lot of, a lot of moxie with what they did and, and was able with one second to go get a snap off. And, and, Andrew, and Aaron Tatino made. You know, and Aaron Tatino play in the corner of the end zone and, and get us a chance to go in at halftime up 28 nothing, and then get the opening kickoff to start the second half. And, and, and then it kind of got a little sloppy with the rain delay, and, and you just don't get much of a rhythm. Um, but, you know, it's – it wasn't the, really the layoff. I think you know the credit has to go to the West Shemokin kids in the way that they played. Um, they you know, battled and and defensively, we know that they're a strong defensive football team. They're, they're as good a defense as, as anybody we play, and uh, and those kids really hung tough. And and but, you know, but at the end of the day, um, you know I'm really proud of our kids because um, again we're going to enjoy little things. So so two little things. Our kids now have become they own the longest heritage conference win streak at 24 games um, and that's not really something that we talk about much it just kind of happened um, and our seniors with the victory tonight that's their 41st victory as a class and uh, they now became the all-time winningest class in Ligonier Valley history so so two important milestones tonight and uh, just you know again we're going to start celebrating things that are pretty big um, and, and honestly, Todd, every Friday night you, that you get an opportunity to play football and you can win, that's a celebration for us now, and that's what we're going to continue to focus on. Continue to look at those milestones. Coach, in that second quarter, was there something your team did or just a coming together of the team with the common goal that really was a turning point? Well, uh, I think our offensive line took over the game. Uh, it was a combination of two things. Um, number one, they were rolling coverage to double Aaron Tatino. And then so that, that then opened the box up, and then um, then the offensive line took over, and, and especially the blocking of, of Cage Dowden um, with some of the things that he did tonight. He was just a beast. Uh, he just really really, really imposed his will, and, and some of those blocks he had were just spectacular. And then, you know, the guys up front, Gabe Gonda got his first start at right tackle for us, um, and and him and uh, Alex Torrance and Jude Shavinsky and uh, Mike Petroff and Blake Bridge, I just thought did a fabulous job. And then Kiri was able to find the holes, and, and he went over 200 yards, and it's been a long time since we've had that. Um, yeah, we got to go back to all the Ryan Torrance days for for that type of a, a number out of a back, and uh, had a nice one-two punch. Actually, a one-two-three punch when Aiden Kelly went in. Uh, he ran the ball well. Kiri had over 200 yards rushing, and then Sam Sheeter in the backfield as well. Uh, and that's a, that's a testament, I think, they'll all tell you those guys up front did a great job. It's not that your team hasn't been getting the yards it needs in the rushing game, but was this the most complete rushing game you've had? Um, it was, but and again, Todd, it's it's a, a one of those things where. If you're going to double Tatino and you're going to 
just have six in the box, then that tells us we're going to run the ball. And, and our kids did a great job tonight. So, um, you know, ultimately in the end, you know, that was what we had to do for us to come out and win. And that's really our goal is string victories, um, take one week at a time, and, and just keep getting better. Was this field uh, something that the guys were really looking forward to? And then what was their reaction when they first got out and were able to run on it? Uh, I mean, it was we were excited about just the fact that we knew that with with the, with what we were going to get with the weather, it wouldn't be a factor. Um, you know, the ball was a little wet, but but that's it. You know, what a fantastic facility, and and kudos to to their school board and their um, you know their their I guess all the stakeholders involved to get a facility like this. It's fantastic, and and, it, and what it does, it gives your kids an opportunity to compete all the time, um, and it's something that the community should be really proud of. It's it's fantastic, but you know, our kids they've been on they've been on turf a lot. Um, but again, getting a chance to play on a surface where you know that um, that the, f the field conditions won't be a factor in a game, yeah, that's that's what it should be about. It should be all about a level playing field. Yeah. Kids enjoying playing football again, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. And and yeah, they had a lot of juice. And one of the things, the big thing for us, um, you know, we're, I guess we're we're the strange ones, but our all we wanted to do tonight was love each other. And celebrate and love each other's accomplishments on the field. That's why. That's all I said. I said I don't care what we do, what the score is. Let's just all enjoy. You know, if someone makes a play. You know, help out your brother and love him a little bit and show him. And, and it was a it was a fun fun night to be a Ram football player. Coach, thanks. Thank you. There's Roger Bito on the field after the game last night. Wes Shemokin's coach, of course, John McCullough on the other sideline. But Sean McCullough, after the Ligonier Valley win here tonight at West Shemokin High School, uh, you know as well as everybody else that that's just a tough nut to crack, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, Ligonier Valley is a great team. But, you know, also at the same time, I think, you know, hopefully people realize that we got a pretty darn good football team here. I mean, we, we battled with them. It was 7 nothing until probably five minutes left in the half, and then things went sideways on us there in the last five minutes. Um, but, you know, we, we played hard. Extremely proud of how our kids played. Um, so now we got to regroup, come back, and get ready for Penn's Manor. Coach, Ligonier Valley, of course, is vaunted in these past several years for their passing attack. Uh, they can run the football, too. And, and maybe this was the first time this year that they've really had to prove that. Well, uh, we didn't want six to beat us. Um, you know, and he made, he made plays. But, uh, I mean, you look back at, uh, you know, the earlier games, I mean, teams, you, can, you know, can't contain them. So we wanted other guys to beat us tonight, and unfortunately they did. Um, yeah, we, 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 we struggled stopping the run against them tonight, and usually our run defense is our, you know, is our, is our big thing. Um, so we need to come back and we need to shore that up because um, it needs to be better than what it was tonight. Offensively, Coach, um, talk about attacking this Ligonier Valley defense. Uh, you've got an offense that can run the football and pass the football. Yeah. Tell me about tonight in this, this game. Well, I'll tell you what, Ligonier Valley, um, their run defense is uh, outstanding. Um, their defensive line is, is uh, probably the best D line that I've seen in a while. Um, they're very disruptive. Um, so it makes it very uh, difficult to run the football on them. And, you know, you know, we, we, we had we had some decent decent success at times, but um, you know we had to throw the ball more than what uh, what we're used to. Made some plays, just um, you know they made made more than what we did. You've played two of the top teams in the Heritage Conference, Northern Cambria, Ligonier Valley. Uh, every coach wants things to get easier, but at the same time, you don't want them to get easier because you know that in the Heritage Conference, every game is going to be tough. Well, it definitely doesn't get any easier. Um, we got. You know, tough schedule here on out. Penn's Manor is an outstanding football team. United's a good football team. Um, you know, Salzburg's dangerous. And then you got Homer. Um, so, doesn't sound uh, very easy to me. <laughs> <laughs> coach, thanks so much. There's thanks, John so much. McCullough, the head coach of the West Shemokin Wolves. He's a good-natured guy. I like him a lot. Yeah, good good guy. A lot of these coaches you got to love. All of them. Um, they're, they're really accommodating and uh, – you know, they handled defeat as well as victory, and I, th I think it's, it's truly appreciated from our end, anyhow, the Absolutely. way they do. Absolutely. 26 minutes after 9 o'clock, it is the Luther Ford Coaches Corner Program, AM 1450.
Uh, 100.3 FM, the sports channel at WDADradio.com. I'm having a little trouble little keeping focused. A little brain cramper there, well, huh? See, I, I was so worried because we hadn't heard from Mark Burdick until just now. Yes. And it's an hour and a half he's, into he's the here. program. He's on a raft. We got him off the raft. Whew. I mean, you worry about the, you worry about your kids, don't you? Uh, it is a Saturday morning. It is week five of the high school football season. Well, Mark Birding and you last night at Memorial Stadium in Homer City as the United Lions came to town. We're going to talk about that game next, but uh, give me a couple of thoughts on it. Well, it, it, you know, United was pointed in that direction. Uh, that You knew they were going to come in and give Homer a good game. Homer has yet to find a running game. And United made sure they didn't find it last night. They did a nice job of bottling up uh, Logan Williams again. And, and the Wildcats are going to have to figure that out if they're going to have any success during the remainder of their season. But uh, that being said, I, I thought the Lions played a solid game. Kyle Silk was good. So was uh, Hunter Cameron there. They, they had solid games. They did what they had to do to win. And, you know, the game really was was uh, a missed extra point but uh, a, a lot of bizarre things went on I won't delve into that because I think the interviews cover it but the, it was some weird plays last night including the storm so it, it was one of those nights that was bound to happen and uh, coach page I think took it with a grain of salt knows hey we got to prepare better and get ready for uh, northern Cambria as I was making the trip from Marion Center over to West Shimokan because my game kicked off an hour earlier than the other games I was listening to you guys including <laughs> the double punt uh, so that's one of the plays I'm sure you're talking about yes and we'll visit that and much more as the Wildcats and the Lions hook it up last night. That's next on the Luther Ford Coaches Corner Program, AM 1450 WDID, 100.3 FM, and the Sports Channel, directly linked at WDIDradio.com. It's time for another kickoff. And Luther Ford is kicking off SUV season with amazing deals on America's top-selling brand. And that includes America's top-selling pickup, the F-150. Always unstoppable, the Ford F-150. And with the fall season upon us, and I dare to say winter not far behind, check out the full lineup of F-150s and SUVs at Luther Ford. The F-150 is the Motor Trend Truck of the Year. And right now, save over $7,150 off of MSRP on a 2018 Ford. Ford F-150 XL 4x4 Super Cab, sale priced at just $34,200, plus tax and fees. Get 0% financing for 72 months, regardless of down payment. Take delivery by October 1st. Not all buyers will qualify for red carpet lease or Ford credit financing. See dealer for details or call Luther Ford at 1-877-370-6292. See the huge selection of F-150s and the complete lineup of SUVs during SUV season. Going on now at Luther Ford, Route 119, Homer City. Shop 24-7 at LutherFord.com. Celebrating its 50th season, this is the Luther Ford Lincoln Coaches Corner. Indeed it is, and we're just about at the beginning of the fourth quarter. It's 9.30 in the morning. Last night in the Heritage Conference, the United Lions make the trip to Homer Center to take on the Homer Center Wildcats with the story of the game. Here is Mark Burdick. United Lions ruin Homer Center's homecoming 14-13, to all of the scoring in the first half, a crazy game with all kinds of crazy bounces, including two punts on one punt. A punt that hit the lineman and was picked up by Kyle Silk, and he punted it again. That kind of night, and it went United's way. The difference, a missed extra point. United scoring on their first drive, starting at their own 35-yard line. They drove 12 plays, 65 yards, used over six minutes of clock, gained five first downs, and Kyle Silk finished it off. Sidecar left of Silk is Cameron, and Silk going to keep it. Straight up the gut, now he bounces it outside, and he goes into the end zone untouched. And with 5.28 to play in the first quarter, the United Lions made that look very, very easy. A 65-yard touchdown drive benefited by a roughing the punter penalty on Homer Center. Homer Center bounced right back after Silk's extra point made it 7 to nothing. They started at their own 45-yard line, got a 31-yard pass to Logan Williams. A 15, uh, a short run took the football to the 15-yard line, and then Ben Schmidt decided to go up top. That triangle formation indeed, and throwing end zone, touchdown, Homer Center. Left side of the end zone, Kobe Doherty, who's been red hot. And it's a six-point Conversion on the pass from Schmidt to Doherty with 3.35 to play in the first quarter. The Wildcats bounce right back. It's 7-6. 7-7 after Ben Schmidt's extra point. 
Fake punt back fired on United. Homer Center started at the United 34-yard line, and they had a second down and 11, and on back-to-back plays, they got in the end zone. And Ben's going to keep it up the gut to the 30, to the 25, to the 20, straight down the center of the field, and he carries Kyle Silk to the goal line. But he's going to be held out of the end zone at the half-yard line. But a 34-yard run from quarterback Ben Schmidt with 29 seconds left in the first quarter sets up Homer Center first in goal. Split back, Schmidt under center, done. Turns, hands it off to Justin Walbeck, and the freshman has his first varsity touchdown in his career. And it comes with nine seconds left in the first quarter. The Wildcats are now out in front, 13-7. Ben Schmidt's extra point was wide left. That proved to be a big point that was missed at that point. So it was 13-7. Homer Center with the lead. United came back late in the half. They started at their own 36-yard line, got a 19-yard run by Kyle Silk, worked it down inside the 10-yard line, had uh, first and goal, ended up with a third down and goal at the six. From the shotgun with the sidecar, Cameron is Silk. Silk takes the direct snap, hands it to Cameron, and he's up the gut into the end zone for a United Lion touchdown. Virtually untouched following the right side of that offensive line. Center Austin Rose, Joe Turek, and Mark McCullough. And we're knotted up at 13 apiece with 62 seconds left in the second quarter. And the difference in the game, Kyle Silk's extra point was good. 14 to 13 at the half. Rains came. We had no scoring in the second half. We did have a 20-minute rain delay that started at 8.45 p.m. They resumed play at 9.05, United on a fourth and one in their own territory. Ended up going for it, but fumbled it. Homer Center couldn't convert, and both teams kind of duped it out. Homer Center had something going late in the game, starting at the 5.43 mark. They had a 22-yard pass to Cyani that punched it out from their own 10-yard line to the 32. Fourth and seven play, Logan Williams rushed for a first down barely after a measurement. Uh, First down to the 42. Uh, Third and three play, Ben Schmidt, the quarterback, rushed to United's 46. But then on the very next play, first and ten, United put the game away for all intent and purposes on this play. Schmidt takes the direct snap, throws over the middle, intercepted by Clevenger. Up the left sideline to the 50 to the 45, steps out of bounds in the Wildcat bench at the 40-yard line. And that should do it for United, Eli Clevenger as he has had one heck of a football game here tonight, and he makes a big defensive play to thwart the Wildcats' comeback attempt. Yep, 26-yard interception return. United did turn it over, got a 22-yard punt, though. They went three and out, and Homer Center last-ditch effort, and a desperation pass was knocked away at the 15-yard line of United as time expired. So the United Lions, a big win on the road. And they improved to two and three. The Wildcats dropped to three and two at the midway point of the season. United played an outstanding football game. Homer Center had a lot of trouble getting their ground game going here. Uh, and it backfired, uh, or not backfired, but uh, didn't work out for them. And United comes away with the victory 14 to 13 over the Homer Center Wildcats. Thank you, Mark, for that recap of the Wildcats and the Lions last night. And on the football field after the game, Ward Hilliard catches up with Kevin Marabito. Congratulations on on a great win and pretty much a bizarre evening here. Uh, a lot of weird stuff was going on out there even before the rains came. But uh, the one thing that I noted, and I'm, I'm very impressed, is you guys well prepared for Homer Center's offense. Yeah, I, I mean, Ward, we... The credit's got to go to the kids. I mean, we we seen things on tape, but you know, it, it's the kids got to do the job. You know, our, our our kids came hard to play. I mean, we we seen some of the things they were doing. We tried to defense them, you know, and you know, re- really, when you you go back on it, every bounce kind of went our way. I mean, you go the double punt, the you know, bounces going into our hands, you know, and, and the kids. I mean, they 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 just did a great job. You know, my coaching staff prepared them well and. You know, after last week, you, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, we, we were down in the dumps, and tonight kind of brought us up. And, you know, when the defense plays well and you, you, you play as a team, you know, things work out for you. Well, you, you certainly did that. And I, I thought your uh, both Kyle Silk and Hunter Cameron ran extremely hard. They were breaking tackles. I know Coach Page not happy with the tackling, but 
They were running hard. They helped you guys possess the ball, which I felt was another key that you had kept the ball away from Homer and had some success you know, and, moving. And, and that's what we talked about, Ward. I mean, your your best defense is your offense. I mean, you, if you can keep the ball out of their hands, it, it can help you. You know, and tonight, you know, we, we did a lot of positive things in offense, you know, got some drives, you know. Early on, we kept telling our kids, you know, the first few games, they wanted those big splash plays that you go 70 yards you know, and put the defense back out. We said, if we're patient and just keep grinding it, you know, it's it's my style of football. I like to just grind it out. And, you know, we we made some plays and we had to. And, it, you know, it, it was a great team effort and a team win. Well, it was backyard football there in that fourth quarter. Three guys on one side run to that side. That's what we used to play in the backyard. Yeah. That's what you guys did. No risk in and that. that. And yeah. with the kind of runners you had, it worked. I mean, to Homer's credit, they were able to stop that eventually. But you were able to pick up a couple first downs, use clock. Well, it worked yeah. well. Didn't yeah, it? and you know, and that's what you got to do. You, you got to try to work the clock. I know I get on my offensive coordinator. He was trying to get plays in too quick, and you know, we, we, we slowed it down. But you know, we we call that our beast formation, and we we just try to line up and get them. I mean, some teams take it away, but for the most part, that that formation works well on a night like this. You know, it, it's it's a low risk thing, and just get it. I mean, as I, you, you know me, Ward. I've been at it a long time, and if I can run the football and get that power football, that's what I like. Well, I said if anybody's going to turn that place around, it would be you. And I'll tell you honestly, watching your kids after that win, I think it's going to have a real positive impact, not only on your team but through the school that maybe some of these guys that haven't been coming out are going to yeah. come out and bolster this program. I mean, and, and it, it's hard to say a word. I mean, we our kids are excited now, you know, and I, I think the community is excited, you know, when, you're, when things aren't going well. You know, pe- people don't believe in you, but, you know, if, if they've seen tonight and our kids, it, it's it just was one of those – one of those nights that the, the kids wanted it. I mean, you know, Kyle and Hunter, they ran possessed. You know, and the offensive line did what they had to. And when you when you got kids believing in what you want and believing in the system, it, it'll work. Ward, if I can ask Coach Marabito, I had the chance to visit his walkthrough practice yesterday. Number one, I was impressed with the energy from start to finish, Coach. And I just sensed when we were concluding the interview and practice had concluded that there was a little bit of sense of urgency on your team that you really needed this one. Did I read you right? Yes. I mean, we, we told them all along. I mean, it, this this is a pivotal game. If if we drop that, you know, you, you could be staring at one and nine. You know, we, we told them. I mean, last week was a disappointment for us, and it, it was a gut check time. I mean, we, we tell them there's two ways you can go. You, you can either start climbing that ladder again, or you, you can be satisfied where you were. You know, and I, I'm glad to see our kids took the other road, and, you know, with the energy we had. And we overall, we had a great week of practice. And I'm one of those superstitious guys that, Sometimes when you look too good, you, you don't look good on Friday night, but really it did carry over for us tonight. Well, Coach, I wish you well the rest of the way. You got two of the big guys out of your way, yeah. including uh, this one here tonight. So yeah. uh, hopefully well, things turn for you. Maybe well, we'll be talking to you down the road. Huh? Just say we're, we, we just got to keep it one, you know, one week at a time, one game at a time, and see what happens. But if our kids play with that type of energy they did tonight, you know, good things could happen for us. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah. Good luck the rest uh, of the way. Guys. Thank you, Ward. That's Kevin Marabito, the head coach of the United Lions last night. They, by the way, will be our Heritage Conference Game of the Week on U92 against the Salzburg Trojans coming up this week. Our interview with Greg Page, the Wildcats head coach, is brought to you by Forged Human Performance Center and by Albus. And Coach Page is coming up. In sports, athletes are looking for that competitive advantage. So where do you find it? At Forged Human Performance Center. Forged Human Performance Center is the area's premier source for sports performance training. Train with an experienced and certified strength and conditioning coach to help improve athletic skills like speed, agility, quickness, and strength while reducing the likelihood of injury. Sports performance training at Forged Human Performance Center. Conveniently located on Route 119 in Homer City or go online at forgedhpc.com. Back with you at Memorial Field, the Wildcats fall to the United Lions 14-13. to Head coach Greg Page brought to you by Alexander Roloff Services. The difference in this game, an extra point, hard-fought battle. Coach, sum it up for me. I give credit to United. Um, they made they made more plays than we did. Uh, you know, you could look at the extra point. That's early in the game, I think second quarter, and it's just one of those things where, you know, you expect to score again. And uh, we didn't do it. We didn't make enough plays. Uh, we were fortunate they had a couple scores called back. And then we extended a few of their drives, their scoring drives. I think both drives we, we helped with penalties. And you just can't do that. We've been, we've been living on the edge a little bit. 
Um, it's great when you win, but, uh, you know, United deserves the credit tonight. They deserve to win the football game. They did, they did more little things correct than we did. Coach, tackling in the first half kind of reared its ugly head again. We've seen some inconsistency in that area. I know you addressed it with sideline reporter Nick Schmidt heading off uh, the field at halftime. Got a little bit better in the second half. Yeah, because it got wet and there wasn't a lot of ability for guys to cut. Listen, here's the thing. Tackling a lot of times is a one-two thing. And we seem to struggle at times when people, you know, break through a seam or get in the open field. And you have to have the guts to come up and make tackles. I mean, uh, there was a screen pass in the, in the first half. I think it was third and 20. And, you know, first off, we don't cover it. And secondly, we want to wipe off the guy. Um, and he gets a first down. Those, that's an, a classic example right there. Everybody in the world knew they were going to run a screen on third and 20. Um, but we didn't, and we didn't make the play. One kid that played his heart out on defense, and I can't really wait to see his tackle totals, uh, because either our spotter, uh, Nick Bobinitz, has his insurance through Wallbeck Insurance, and he was trying to get a, a lower premium. Uh, or this kid had a heck of a football game. I think it's the latter, but your freshman, Justin Walbeck, defensively, he was one that was not afraid to be physical, a little bit undersized. It's fun watching him grow as a football player, and I think as he grows physically, too, he has a chance to be outstanding. He was tonight. Yeah, and it's hard for me to see in the sidelines when it gets mucked up in the middle uh, who's making a lot of stops, but he's been coming along. Um, you know, part of what you do with your defense is you want to kind of keep your linebackers free. Uh, to a point where they can roam and make tackles. But he covers some ground, too, and that's tough for a freshman to be in that environment. They have a big line, and, and you know what they're going to do. Their backs are big, for crying out loud. They're, they're 180 pounds and 205, I think. So, um, you know, if that's the case, we need more efforts like that. Uh, I, I, th I thought a couple other guys played hard defensively. Uh, Trevor Malacker, you know, was taking guys on. Uh, I thought Cyani at times did okay. Uh, those guys on the edge, they have difficult assignments, especially when they're going to, they're going to walk three or four guys out there in that bunch look. Um, we just we just needed to be more consistent. You were held to 103 yards rushing. They did a great job on the area's leading ground gainer, Logan Williams, held them to 16 carries, 37 yards, and credit to them, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's what it is. We thought a couple things. We had uh, good seams on a few traps. I uh, closed quickly. Uh, you know, we need to get down on some linebackers in that. We, we whiffed or we didn't hold blocks. And, you know, that's, that's a testament to those guys. I, I knew their front would be difficult. Uh, the one linebacker, Clevenger, 17, I thought played particularly well at times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we're risk-reward that way. I mean, we, get, we just got to get better. I mean, it's, uh, we're a different kind of offense than we were the last several years. We have to embrace that more, and we just have to get better at it. Kevin Marabito addressed it. He was very candid about it. There was a lot of crazy bounces in this play. Did you ever see a, a punt that turned into two punts? The first one goes off of a lineman, and the second one, he picks it up after it caroms back to him and punts it again. I didn't know, quite frankly, if it was legal or not. It is, as long as the ball remains behind the line of scrimmage. And I give Silk a lot of credit. I mean, that's a, that's a heady play uh, because we probably get the ball inside their 40 uh, versus at our own one, and we're not built for that, um, you know, it's just one of those plays that was one of many that, that, you know, changed momentum. There was another crazy play. Pass out in the flat actually hits the helmet of a, of a lion, I think, that was in a wing position, and it caroms right to the intended receiver. I mean, it was just one of those nights, and this isn't to take anything away from United. No, not because, at all. Because, uh, but I, I'm just, I guess the point is I've never seen so many crazy plays. A fumble that was punched ahead 15 yards and yeah. picked up. A couple On that of, same play, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it was, yeah. Uh, it was kind of uh, bizarre at times. I did want to ask you this. In the uh, fourth quarter, uh, you're pinned at your own one-yard line. You end up with fourth down. Mm -hmm. Kobe's pinned against the goal post did you consider taking a safety at that point to kind of flip field position i i did but i thought we'd been punting pretty well and we were covering it well um i don't re recall where they got the ball there i think maybe around the 40 so field position could have been flipped if we're punting from the 20 32 yard uh, line 32 got that's even worse so it briefly entered my mind and i I, th I knew we would need a touchdown to win but um we rolled with it he'd been punting well so i thought maybe we could uh, get another one off. I don't think we covered particularly well on that one, or we could have kept the kid out a little bit further. And in the rain and the wind, I mean, last-ditch effort. Um, you know, you, you, one drive, you did some good things before Clevenger that you talked about had the big interception. I thought overall the two-minute offense, uh, or the hurry-up offense, did some things well, but uh, yeah. just didn't finish. I give our kids credit at the end. Our backs were against the wall. 
um, you know, we did we did have to hurry up. I thought we made some smart decisions there. We had a couple bad snaps, and he still Ben still made uh, a couple things out of that, either a scramble or he hit a couple passes. We got out of bounds. We had the presence to do that. At the end there, I think we're at the 40, 40 or 35, and, I mean, you, you almost know you have to just take a shot deep. Uh, we sent five guys. It's just hard because he – couldn't get a good grip on the ball, and it just came up short. I mean, I, again, I, I give them credit. I, it's, it's one of those things um, I, I hate to lose. I hate to lose, and I hope our kids hate it as much as we do as coaches. But there's times you just got to tip your cap to the other guys. That's exactly right. Well stated. And, by the way, I know you didn't deliver what he really wanted, a Wildcat victory, but happy birthday to your father, Jerry Page. They announced it on the public address system. We announced it during the broadcast, 86 years young on Thursday, and uh, hopefully you can spend a little bit of time with Dad over the weekend, and uh, that will wipe away any uh, bad thoughts of this football game. I'll just sum it up this way. I appreciate the, the, the mention and, and on the uh, PA. I called him um, last night, and I told him how much he meant to me. It's, it's, it's easy for me to, to smile when I think of somebody like him. Well stated. Coach, we'll see you next week at Northern Cambria. Thank you, guys. There's Greg Page, the Homer Center coach, and our interview brought to you by Forged Human Performance Center and Alba's of Homer City. Alba's in downtown Homer City is proud to support Homer Center Athletics. Join your family and friends at Alba's and listen to all the Wildcats games this season. And while there, enjoy their great lunch and dinner specials and the coldest drinks in town. Alba's is a family-friendly restaurant. Everyone at Alba's wishes Coach Page and the Wildcats the best this season. Alba's is open for lunch Tuesday through Sunday. Their food is the talk of the town, and so are the Wildcats. Alba's, 221 South Main Street in Homer City. Ooh, your good health looks so good on you. Ladies, the Indiana Regional Medical Center invites you to an unforgettable Spirit of Women evening. Girls' Night Out, Good Health Looks Good on Everyone, with guest speaker Natalie Glaser, the author of Don't Call Me Brave, I Was Not Alone. It's Thursday, October 11th at the Rustic Lodge. Natalie Glaser always prioritized her career over everything until she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Hear her amazing story when life gives you lemons, make lemon drops. Admission is free to Spirit of Women members, $20 for all others, and that $20 will make you a member of Spirit of Women for life. Please bring a craft supply or a grocery store gift card that night to be donated to Hopeful Hearts. Engage, eat, and enjoy. It's an evening of inspiration, fun, and laughter. Girls' Night Out, good health looks good on everyone. The doors open at 5 p.m. on October 11th at the Rustic Lodge. Call the IRMC Institute for Healthy Living at 357-8088 to register. That's 357-8088. little fourth quarter action here on the Luther Ford Coaches Corner program celebrating 50 years on AM 1450 WDAD and 100.3 FM online the sports channel just go to WDADradio.com first thing comes up is going to be the Coaches Corner banner click on it you've got the sports channel link right there Todd Marino along with Ward Hilliard and we have a little bit of time here Ward to talk about the season so far the halfway point and about what's coming up, and we even take a look into the District 6 rankings here in these next few minutes. Heritage Conference this year, Ligonier Valley right at the top at 5-0, and followed by Northern Cambria at 4-1, and West Shemokin 3-2 and now on this football season, and uh, the rest of the league lining up sort of behind uh, the, uh, yeah. the Wolves. Uh, the Wolves are 3-2. Like and two. A- Bunched up. <laughs> bunched up. Yeah, I guess that's the, that's the better. I was trying to think of the right word, and, and well, bunched up yeah. is right. Homer Center three and two. Penn's Manor three and two. Salzburg is one and four. Uh, Blairsville is one and four. United is two and three. Uh, and purchase line now one and four on the season. So yeah, bunched up is right. Uh, and I think over the course of the next two weeks, you're going to see a major change in that. I think you're going to see some of the lower ones moving up and some of the upper ones in that bunch yeah. maybe sliding down because they got to play each other and the balance is significant I, I i think the games that i have seen anyway uh anybody can beat anyone and that's not a cliche that is pretty much a fact from what i've seen the one team i did not mention marion center now two and three so yes. next friday night they're at blairsville uh, with the stingers looking to make a move and 
the confidence you gain in a win such as they had last night has to just be tremendous. You can't be complacency, and I don't think Adam Rising will let that happen. No, he won't. Uh, very impressed when we talked to him in the preseason, and certainly when we interviewed him after last week, and I said to turn that team around and get them ready to play a Northern Cambria team as well as they did. That that was a good coaching effort on their part. The same with Coach Marabito. Uh, by the way, those interviews were in the booth because those guys were dripping wet when they were <laughs> – there's no way we'd be out in the field doing those interviews, but he, he too, uh, got a win, I think, that's not only going to serve his program well, it may you know, get more kids out for football at United again and get that glory back that the uh, Lions were so well known for back in the day. Well, the interesting thing about that for me personally is that that's our Heritage Conference U92 game of the week next week, a Salzburg team that has to be pretty um, not satisfied. Certainly they lost, but um, pretty well keyed up about their effort last night against Penn's Manor against United coming off the win. We'll put it on 92.5 FM U92. Let those two teams go at it. Yeah, there's some some talent. I mean, all these teams have some talented players, and uh, game in, game out, they seem to be coming to the fore. So it, it'll be a, a great last half of the season. Ligonier Valley just keeps on rolling and they take on purchase line at home on Friday night. Yeah, they've they've got it all together. They're they're gearing up for things beyond the uh the Heritage Conference schedule. They're looking beyond that through past the Appalachian game and uh into the district playoffs. They are two time defending champ and uh, they're looking real strong as uh, have a shot at a three peat in that regard. Coach Page and the Homer Center Wildcats, uh Probably not thrilled about taking off a team, taking on a team last night that was coming off a loss in United. Now they have to go to Northern Cambria, <laughs> which is coming off a loss as well, and play the Colts. That's going to be a tough row. Yeah, two teams coming off defeats. So you're playing at Northern, uh, and uh, as I said, Homer's big problem, as I see it, is their defense has been uh, so-so all year, but uh, they cannot get their running game going. And if they cannot do that, could be a long remainder of the year for him. Penn's Manor West Shemokin is an intriguing matchup, isn't mm. it? Yeah, it sure is. Uh, certainly most Shemokin solid defensively. If if they have some success offensively, they're going to be a handful for the Comets. But again, as I said, Billy Packer and his staff really get ready for games like that. And Samoji is uh, helping them along a little bit. So if they can continue to be competitive, Comets always tough a tough draw. Let's look into District 6 uh, for a second. Well, Westmont Hilltop is, has an interesting thing going on here. Listen to this dynamic. Um, the Westmont Hilltoppers are 2-2. Two and two. They're playing this afternoon. Uh, they'll be taking on uh, Penn Cambria. Uh, and Penn Cambria on the year is... Um, there yeah. they are. They're 3-1. and one. Yeah, they had one loss. So Westmont Hilltop... Uh, and listen to this. They lost to Bedford... Uh, and they lost to Chestnut Ridge. Now Bedford's four and one now. Chestnut Ridge is five and zero. Oh. They had a thirty to nothing win over Bishop Guilfoyle. Uh, so Westmont can play. Yeah. I think that's the point I'm trying to make yes. here. Their game against Penn Cambry is going to be kind of telling here today. Uh, and then, of course, uh, that plays into what's happening with the rest of the uh, of the double A standings because Westmont Hilltop is a triple A team. They'll play Richland on Friday. Richland and Ligonier Valley at the top of the double A standings. They'd be a very interesting matchup. Yeah, Westmont's a hard team to figure. You know, their their program kind of uh, fluctuates between uh, top and bottom. They're, they've never they been that. a dominant football program, but uh, they've always been reasonably competitive. But they seem to fade, uh, and I don't know if that's going to be the case this year. We'll certainly find out. Well, they run that really funky offense. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is basically like the flying wedge, only it's the crawling wedge. Uh, they, everybody gets <laughs> Bunched in around there, and the quarterback, he, he crouches down below the center level so they can't even see the snap, and uh, and then they run there. It's like, it's like watching a yeah. turtle go up the field and trying to break through the shell. Uh, so Richland, Ligonier Valley at the top of the double A standings, each at 5-0. and oh. Richland had the edge coming into this weekend. They'll mess around with PowerPoints and, and things of that nature, but I think Richland will still be um, slightly ahead of Ligonier Valley in those standings. Uh, Southern Huntington was next in the standings. They'll fall, and Bellwood Annis will be elevated. Southern Huntington lost, Bellwood Annis won, so they're both 4-1. and one. Uh, West Branch is in there. They won last night, and West Branch is putting together a season. They're 4-1. and one. 
Yeah, it, it's that's a program that's had success in the past. Uh, again, they're hot and cold this year. They seem to have a good good unit. So we don't know enough about them. At least I don't to uh, mm-hmm. to make good assumptions as to what the the future holds for them. But uh, they're right in the midst right now. There's a new number one team atop the standings in Class A. Maybe you've heard of them. They're called Bishop Guilfoyle. Um, I think I've heard the Marauders <laughs> won last night, and um, they will be taking on. Uh, uh, well, they'll be number one. Northern Cambria lost, and so Northern Cambria will drop in the in the rankings. Claysburg Kimmel, uh, I believe they're playing today. Yeah, they're playing Glendale, and Glendale's having actually a, a fairly nice season as well. Um, well, actually not. They're one and three heading into the game today. Uh, but then comes uh, Homer Center, Portage, Penns Manor. Comet's going to make a jump. The Cottonmouth Valley is two and two heading into their game today against um, Myersdale. So, you know, there's some things to shuffle in the second half of the season as well there. Yeah, Westpac a little stronger than they were perhaps the last couple of years. Although the stronger teams that we've seen, Berlin and Portage, are having kind of off years. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting. Some of the programs we expect to make noise every year are having down years. Most Shannon Valley is now 0-5. Yeah, that, that happens. That happens. These schools this size – you do have those little sags. Yeah, they're joined down there by a team called Bishop McCourt at 0-5. Unbelievable. Wow. All right, we're going to wrap up this edition of the Luther Ford Coaches Corner program in just a moment. Our Hosses Player of the Week is coming up. Calm, cool, decidedly continental. With luxury comes outstanding comfort, which is what makes driving a Lincoln a uniquely enjoyable experience. Luxurious, sophisticated, and unmatched performance are words that come to mind when describing the Lincoln brand. Lincoln has been one of the most trusted names in the industry for years, and Luther Lincoln has been a leader for over 60 years. When people think Lincoln, they think Luther Lincoln in Homer City because Luther Lincoln can bring you a deal like this. For a limited time, save $7,000. $700, including $2,000 competitive conquest cash off of MSRP on a new 2018 Lincoln Continental Reserve all-wheel drive, sell priced at just $58,000. And just announced, get 0% financing for 60 months, regardless of down payment. Driving a Lincoln is closer than you think when you visit Luther Lincoln, Route 119 in Homer City. And remember, you can shop 24-7 at LutherFord.com. Haas's Steak and Seahouse, Wayne Avenue, Indiana, is pleased to be the exclusive sponsor of the High School Football Player of the Week. Haas's will announce the top player from all the area's teams and recognize them with a custom plaque acknowledging their accomplishment. The Haas's Player of the Week Award is just another way that Haas's gives back to the community. If you're planning a party for any occasion, ask Haas's about their free banquet rooms. Haas's Steak and Seahouse, Wayne Avenue in Indiana. And our Haas's Take and See House Player of the Week. There are so many possibilities. Dylan Sindrick had such a big yeah. night last night. Um, and and on and on it goes across this Heritage Conference. Big, big night for Kiri Miller of Ligonier Valley. Had 200 yards rushing. We're going with Garrett Wells of Marion Center. I think he had 180. I'm not sure uh, of his rushing total. But he also had two interceptions and a big touchdown night. last yeah. night. To help win the game. That's yeah. That's key. That's a big victory, and that is today's edition of the Luther Ford Coaches Corner, AM 1450, WDAD 100.3 FM, Jukebox Saturday with Tony Next. Your favorite music station, AM 1450, WDAD, Indiana, and 100.3 FM.